Hey everybody, it's Lee with Oregon Arboriculture. We just took out a nice little birch tree. Some people call them silver birch, some people call them European white birch. They're very similar trees because they're basically the same thing. They're called Betula pendula. And uh, something cool I wanted to point out is I convinced the customers to remove it because trimming it wasn't gonna keep it alive. This thing had beetles like crazy. But here's something we didn't see from the bottom. You can see here, this had already split in the past started to try and heal but this is way too big of a wound and this had a 20 foot long five inch diameter branch hanging off of it and it was right over the neighbors fancy cars guaranteed it would have broke at some point in time just one storm away but from the top you could see how bad it was from the bottom it was really hard to tell because i just didn't notice it but that's something later on that we saw that helped concrete the idea of taking the tree out and why I convinced them to remove it is because the beetle damage was so extensive that some of the branches were already failing. And I thought I grabbed the right one to show you guys, but I might not have. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Okay, so when you're looking at the tree, if you see a whole bunch of holes in a row in a line with the way that the circulatory system of the tree runs in line with the veins, then you know that's a sap sucking bird because they'll have a straight line across. They don't want to move their feet much. They just want to peck across and drink as they go. But when you see this, this solitary hole with this brown goop coming out, that tells you that there's a bacterial infection involved with the sap that's pouring out. And as we get closer, we can see the hole. And if we scrape away the bark, when we reveal the hole, get down into the wood, It's a perfect D shape. So they climb, it's flat across the bottom and rounded across the top. Now what they've done is, when you look at their body, the, the beetle is body, when you look straight at its head and look down the length of its body straight on, they're usually green. These ones are usually green, sometimes they're a darker brown, but they have a rounded top and a flat bottom to their shell. So their carapace looks that way. They only make a hole big enough to squeeze their body in to lay eggs, and I don't even know exactly how that works. But once the beetles start to infest a tree, they don't hatch and fly away. Many times they find a mate, maybe a brother or sister. We don't even know how it works exactly, but they usually stay in the same tree unless there's maybe another tree close by. So they will reinfect the tree over and over and over again until eventually they kill it. Now, there are a few treatments, some soaks, some drips, some systemic pesticides. And they do work from time to time, but they can cost the customer quite a bit of money and there's no guarantee. So if you see considerable dieback, that means, you know, let's say 30, 40% of the trees already started to die back, remove it. You don't want to waste their money. If you're trying to rip them off, go ahead and charge them to systemically inject their trees with insecticides. I'm against micro injections personally as an arborist for 20 years. I've seen what they can do to insects. They don't just kill the, the bad insects, they kill the beneficial insects. And I think that's one of the main reasons for the bee decline that we're seeing. And I hope everybody will think about it before they use insecticides like that. There's much better ways to treat it, and that is remove the tree. It just doesn't work. There's lots of other varieties of birches that don't get the beetle. Uh, good example would be probably a river birch for example still really pretty not too big a little bit wide but not usually that bad and is a nice specimen for people to have in their yards so anyway uh, tune in again if you don't see beetle damage but your trees are dying back it could be drought stress remember almost all birches are extremely drought intolerant so if it dries out in the soil for long periods of time they can die just from that they have very shallow roots and they're not good at storing the things that they need to survive for the future because they don't care. They're always getting water. They don't plan ahead for the future. Anyway, check in next time and we'll talk more about whatever we find.